Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use uh, async module in Node.js. Uh, now, async module is a very useful module uh, that you can use to uh, synchronize a lot of asynchronous stuff that happens in JavaScript. So let's take an example. So what I want to do in this example is uh, download a file once that file is downloaded, I want to process it. Once the processing is done, I want to upload the new file back to the server. And then I want to make an API call to delete the original file, right? So this is a sequential process. You can't process a file unless and until it is downloaded. Whereas you cannot upload the file until and unless it is processed. And finally, you cannot delete uh, the original file until and unless all of the above steps are done. So it's a sequential process, right? Uh, also, just to note, uh, I have added a method called delay. What it does is it will just uh, execute for some time. Uh, this is to mock the real world scenario in which, you know, the actual time uh, might be taken in calling the API call. So for example, uh, in the download call, you would actually make that uh, get call in which you will download the file and that would take time. So just to simulate that, I have added a mock uh, function, which is called delay, which will spend some time, right? So the way we, uh, we traditionally do in JavaScript is using the callback mechanisms. So you can see that the each method uh, is, has a callback argument. And when the method is done, when the download is done, we call that callback, uh, which goes back to the caller stating that, hey, uh, this particular function is done, right? So if you take, uh, for example, download. So when you call download, uh, you, you pass a callback method and then when that is done, the download method will uh, call that callback, right? And which is this function, right? And when the function is called, you go ahead and uh, call the process function, right? So this means that download is done and once that download is done, uh, you get the callback and in that callback, you call the process uh, function. And similarly, you can see we have cascaded upload inside process and then delete inside upload. And finally, uh, once delete is done uh, in the callback, we just print console.log uh, ending demo, right? However, if you see this is a very messy stuff to do, right? We have callbacks once inside another. And also if, if you start handling errors, right? So if you start calling uh, the callbacks with error, then uh, you will have problems, right? So for example, consider this, right? So in this callback, it is sending an error, but uh, here, for example, you will have to uh, get that function. And then uh, in the callback, you have to check whether it's an error or not. And then each of this callback will have if-else statement and that each if-else statement will have further processing, right? So it will kind of get a lot of messy if we continue down this route, right? Which is the callback method. So uh, before we head, up, head to how to use async to solve this problem, let's quickly run this uh, module uh, to see how it works. So if I run uh, node async test, uh, you can see that it kind of gets the job done. It says starting download, finish download, starting process, finish process stuff. So it does uh, correctly uh, as per our uh, expected uh, sequence. But again, this is very messy, right? So this is where async comes into picture. Uh, again, uh, async is uh, external module. So you, what you have to do is you have to install async module. So to do that, you need to do npm install async. And I have already installed this, but for you, you should get, see that a new package is added uh, inside your node modules di directory, right? So if you go to node modules, and if you just get it for async, you can see that uh, async is a uh, present in your uh, node modules directory, right? So now let's see how we can use async. So first of all, you need to get a reference to the async module by using const async require async. And then what we are going to do is we are going to use a waterfall method of that async module provides to do this. And let's see how that is done. So let's go ahead and see async dot waterfall. Now, if you see, uh, this takes couple of things. So first one is an array, which is a task that is that needs to be run in a sequential manner. And the second one is your callback, right? Which is uh, 
the final callback that you will receive when each of the waterfall model is complete. So let's go ahead and give it an array and in the array we'll just say download, we want process, we want upload and then finally we want delete and the second argument it takes is a, a callback method that is called after each of uh, the waterfall methods are executed and it will return error and the data if you want right so we can just say if there is an error then please say console.log error in process and let's just print the error or else we'll just say that demo is done right so uh, that being said, uh, what we'll do is I will just remove the error from here and just see the callback, right? So in each case, it is a success. And let's see what happens when we run this. And you can see it is uh, following the same process. It downloaded, then it processed, then it uploaded, and then it deleted, right? But now it is in a much better uh, structure-wise, right? The code structure-wise, it's much better now. Now we know that it's a waterfall model. Uh, it st starts with download, it then goes to process, it then goes to data, upload, and then it, it goes to delete, right? Also, this also facilitates you passing down uh, the results of one, uh, function to another so for example let's say uh, the download wants to pass something to process right so in the callback what you can see is the first one is obviously an error and we'll just say url of the downloaded file right and once that is done uh, what you can do is you can uh, access it in the in the function of the next function so download is the first function which is followed by process so when the when you call the callback of the download method the first one is the error and the second one is the data that you pass so this data will be uh, available in the first argument of the function so if I just uncomment this and say in the process method data from download is data and this data would not would be nothing but URL of the downloaded file right so let's go ahead and try to execute this one more time and you can see in the process uh, method data from download as URL of the downloaded file, right? So that's way that's how uh, you can use the async dot waterfall method. You can pass down the results of uh, one function to another, and that's how it would work, right? So now now let's try to see the error scenario, right? So instead of saying uh, null uh, as the error, which is a success scenario, we'll just say something like let's say download failed, right? Now, once this happens, uh, let me close this quote. So once this happens, uh, this download method is going to fail. So it is not even going to go and, uh, you know, go ahead with the process method. So this should directly uh, hit our final function callback and then it should come to error and then print out error in, error in the process, in the process and it should print the same error that we have sending here, download, download it failed. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see it started downloaded, it finished download, and it did not even go to process, right? And since we are passing an error in the callback, this would typically happen if the download file actually failed, right? And you would send back that error uh, back to the waterfall method, and then your process would terminate, right? Because there's no point processing if no file is downloaded, right? So that's the whole point of uh, the waterfall model. So the waterfall uh, method of async module is very useful in that that regards. First of all, it makes your uh, code a lot cleaner. Second, it lets you pass uh, the output of one function to another. And third thing is you have a global function callback that will uh, that you will get to execute your logic for a success of the entire flow or error if there is any, right? So I hope uh, waterfall uh, method of module async is clear. Uh, I'm going to move on to uh, another aspect of async, uh, which is async series. So this is another example, right? So now now consider that 
uh, you are, are getting something like events, right? So the events is download, process, upload, and delete, right? So now what you want to do is, again, the same thing. You want to uh, execute these events in a series. First you want to download, you want to process, then you upload, and then you delete. But now in this case, uh, you are receiving this as an events array. So what you did is you iterated over it, events.forage, and for each event, uh, you are calling a method process, right? Where you are passing the uh, individual event and then a callback, right? So what this process does is, depending on what process it is, it will execute the corresponding request. It could either be a database operation or it could be an API request, right? Uh, so just to differentiate that what I have done is I have provided different process time So for example download takes 2000 that is two seconds process take one seconds and process time takes uh, Sorry the upload takes uh, four seconds and so on and so forth, right? And finally uh, once we have set the times I'm saying set time out for that particular time to Actually make the call back again, right? So the download will only be done when the two seconds have uh, gone through right the processing will only be done when one seconds are done right and we want to make sure that uh, download happens before process process happen be happens before upload and upload happens before delete right so let's go ahead and try to run this uh, code and see what happens and this is async each and you can see uh, it is definitely not obeying our order so you can see it st it finished delete first and then it uh, finished process uh, then it finished upload right so this is clearly wrong order and why this is happening is if you see uh, delete takes the least number of time which is 100 milliseconds right and that is why it got terminated first but we really don't want delete to happen first because uh, we need file to be downloaded first because that's when we process it that's when we upload it and only then and we can delete the file right so this is definitely not going to work right so how would you fix this again uh, we have async to our rescue so to do to use async you can use async dot for uh, each series and in this you can see there are three things that it takes one is the array uh, which is which you want to iterate over second is the iterator which iterates over your events and third is obviously the callback right the global callback that you will get so you can give uh, events as the array that you want to iterate on the second one is a function that lets you choose what to do with each event and then you have a callback right so this callback is basically uh, something that async provides so until and unless you call a callback for a particular event it will not even go to the next event right that's how you maintain uh, the sequence of each method and finally you have another global callback which is similar to what we saw uh, in the previous example where you have if it's an error then print console.log error in error in process just print out error and if that is not the case then our demo is successful right demo is all right so now what we'll do in the second uh, method, right, which lets you do processing over event. So what we'll do the same thing. We'll just call process on event and we'll call the pass the callback that we are receiving. So we are essentially doing the same thing that we did in the previous uh, way, but we do are doing it in a much easier structured manner. And what essentially will happen here is that it will iterate over each events, pass it to an event uh, function. And this function will pass it to a process with the callback. And this callback will only be called when the set timeout is done, right? So for example, let's say download. So download will be called uh, with time two seconds. And only after that two seconds is elapsed, we'll, we'll call the callback. And only then it will go to the process method, right? 
so that's how uh, 40 series works so let's go ahead and see if this is working for us let's go ahead and try to run it and you can see it finished downloaded first then it finished process then it should pro finished upload and then finally delete right so now as you can see that it is definitely uh, following the order that we want again uh, if you call the callback with some error it is going to fail again uh, so this is happening on the first time so it will fail on the download itself it will not even go to process and this should get printed so let's go ahead and try that out and right there we go you can see that you know the download fail and you say it's error, error in the process some error right so async is a very good module that lets you have a very better control over asynchronous stuff that happens in javascript maybe it, it could be a database operation it could be an api call right it could be a set timeout or any asynchronous event it could be a disk io so all of stuff uh, that you are doing asynchronously if you want a better more organized way to do it with better control on it uh, you should use uh, async module and it's pretty easy to use it as well right so each of this provides you a hook or a callback to iterate over uh, giving you much granular control over it so uh, that's it for async module uh, let me know if you have any questions thank you